One of Manet's most strikingly original works, Music in the Tuileries Gardens, is a complex, multi-figured portrait and a direct statement by Manet about contemporary life. Within it, we see portraits of Manet's family, friends and acquaintances, from his brother Eugène Manet to the writer Zachary Astruc. And where some portraits are rendered with a degree of precision, others, including that of Baudelaire, are given only a cursory treatment. The painting is also a self-portrait, as Manet himself is pictured at the far left, just on the edge of the canvas. But beyond being a literal likeness of Manet in his circle, this is a kind of cultural self-portrait, and above all, an affirmation of Baudelaire's ideas of modernity, of the heroism of the transient beauty of modern life, and the important role of the flaneur in interpreting and representing that beauty. Now, joining me in front of Music in the Tuileries Garden is the writer and filmmaker Ian Sinclair, who's written extensively about the experience of the modern city. Ian, when you look at this painting, does it scream modern Paris to you? It shouts about modernity. It shouts about the contact with Baudelaire, who is looking at cities in a new way and, and giving the germs of ideas that will play on for poets for generations it's quite difficult to work out what exactly is happening. I mean, we know there's a concert being given, but there's no sign of the orchestra or the band, and I've no real sense of where they are. There's no focal point. Well, I think it's enigmatic and almost surreal quality is a germ of modernity, certainly. And the, the action is not in the frame. The music is elsewhere. What are these people doing here? It's like this hugely clotted gathering in a, in a strange space. They are here because they have moral or social importance. They're all placed and positioned in there as if they represented virtues in some way and as if the music was off screen and something that was haunting them but which we as a reader would have to bring ourselves to the action. Interesting that this has been described as a kind of cultural self-portrait by Manet and he locates himself in the picture but only on the extreme left so he's in the picture but he's detached to a certain extent. Well it's the gaze, the, the Manet gaze, he's looking at us more than at the picture. But what you see in it is almost a precursor of the artist of the moment in that it's a wonderful example of self-promotion. He's got all the possible critics who could write about him into the picture. He's got all the dignitaries, all the social figures, all the patrons. He's lined them all up and squeezed them into this one picture.